but I'm, I'm contending here as the majority of culture and society are fallen beings who have no value system, principles, or ethics they actually stand on. When it comes to a few dollars, they'll forsake everything, including their future, for a little bit of come up, is what I'm saying and what I've noticed. I don't know if you've been living with the same government we've all been living with for the same, I don't know, two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 200 years uh, that continues to write up acts, bills, policies, and codes, take everybody's money at the threat of doing loss, injury, and harm, going around the world, doing wars they never win, and then driving us into bankruptcy and economic ruin, depression, inflation, and great er depression. Because we already did the Great Depression. We did it all again the same way, right? Everybody got put with the blank on. We did the inflation deal. We printed up the money. We, we have no backing. And now we move over to digital, right? So it's all on time. It's all obviously a program. It's all obviously coordinated. If you can see everything for what it is, right? So again, we're back to the original premise. The majority of folks are corporate fascist scum who for a few dollars will forsake the future and all the rights and freedoms of men and women, including themselves, because they serve Molech and Mammon. They want revenue rather than righteousness. So Which is why all the United States citizen scum took a bunch of stimulus while I was telling them it's going to destroy your economy. They didn't give a fuck because the people get the government they deserve. So the government is just like the United States citizen, a cowardly, weak, insecure, fearful, overly projecting strength, right? Just like all the folks who come here and act like they have some knowledge and standing. They're know-nothing television watchers who've never stood on a motherfucking thing a day in their life. But yet somehow they think that they're entitled to rights and benefits and privileges, right? It's laughable, okay? While doing nothing or being nothing other than cowardly, weak, abdicating, lying, voting scum. And while the United States is defined as a federal corporation, the federal government under 5 CFR 575.102, and I quote, federal government means all entities of the government of the United States, including the United States Postal Service and the Postal Board of Contract Appeals. So that's telling us that the federal government means the United States and all of the corporate entities under that government corp incorporated under the laws of the United States. That's what Mr. Hezekiah, are you aware? And then I appreciate your avid research because we need that. Please hold me accountable. If I'm wrong, then I need to update my rap. So please, when you get off here, go and immediately look up. Does the state of, let's say, California have a tax identification number and a principal? Please look that up because I don't want to make the claim and be turned into a fool again like you did earlier. Right. Because you turned me into a fool and you showed me to be wrong and debunked me. So please go look up. Does the state of California or any state of have a tax identifier number and a principal? If it does, that makes it a corporation subject to a commercial code. And then things start to make sense. Right. See, the, the bozo doesn't get right that even though I'm being abrasive with my delivery, I'm doing that purposely to get you stirred up and triggered. So I put a hook in you. So you stay here and keep coming back. I'm macking on you. I really don't feel any a lot of the shit that I'm saying when I call you a bozo. I'm doing that for you. Now, you yeah. say hate is a satanic trait and I'm full of hate. No, this is love you've never seen before. You wouldn't know love and care and truth if it was right in front of your face. It sounds like hate to someone who rebukes the truth. All those that hate me love death. You're a death worshiper. And you don't know it. Right? So you're, 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 you're confused. You're a little confused. You're, you're in a misunderstanding because your feelings are, are misaligned. They're, they're misreading the situation, right? You're misunderstanding the situation because your feelings are misleading. It, it feels like an attack because truth is combative. I'm speaking truth that is a direct affront to your belief system, which is false. So it feels like an attack. It feels like, hey, I'm doing what your daddy never did for you. I'm giving you true love and care and true objective logic so you could become a better man. It feels like hate because you're used to your mama's love. So you didn't have a daddy in a home to give you love like this. So it feels like hate, right? To men out there, it feels like bonding and inspiration. But to you, it feels like hate because you're used to coochie, coochie, coo. Ain't you a cute little baby soy lord? Oh, you got 100 on World of Warcraft? Oh, man, isn't that great? See, I didn't get none of that. So I'm almost off to the other side, right? because I didn't have a mama, right? So I never got the coochie coo. I never got the enabling. I never got told that I was uh, good enough for just being me, right? I had to always do something and be something in order to get validation. That's the difference. So you notice women in the world a lot nowadays, they don't have to do nothing and be nothing to get validation of men. That's again, a toxic feminine trait. So a lot of you males, a lot of you men, you don't think you got to do and be something to get respect and you're wrong, right? And the same goes for the women. You can't just be a pretty face and get respect. You got to do and be something. You ain't entitled to that. And your mama taught you, you were entitled to love and care and respect when you weren't because you didn't do and be who and what you need to be. My love's conditional, motherfucker. I love you to whatever level you love the truth and yourself. If you don't, I got nothing for you. You ain't gonna drain me with your toxic, parasitic, looping bullshit, uh-uh. I'm gonna give my power, energy, and attention out to everybody who wants some of it, uh-uh. You better be seeking truth. You better care about the growth and development because I'll cut you right the fuck off because that's what you need. You don't need enabling. You need to be told your fucking weakness so you can level up and come back and then we can co-create. Until then, there's nothing here for you except this. If you think this makes me look bad, great. This is what I live off of. So, you know, you, you, I got everything to gain 
uh, um, and nothing to lose, right? You got everything to lose and nothing to gain except your soul back here if you would just listen to what the fuck I'm saying and live it. But you don't want that. So let me stop rambling. Sorry, folks. Go ahead, expert panel. Let's well, touch no, on Larry's, Larry's yeah. getting emotional up there, right? He's, he's feeling yeah, spirit. He's getting emotional. Yeah, I better let him go first. Go ahead. Try and toss out that that science-y word of depression. I don't know. I've never yeah. like, been able to figure out what it is. Sounds like some nonsense. Hey, bro, depression's real simple. When you ain't doing and being what the fuck you need to be, you get anxiety, right? Anxiety is always a cornerstone, a part of depression. They'll always say, it's a dual diagnosis. Yeah, but you don't understand it. You don't understand it. Anxiety's there as a supernatural force to get you off your ass and doing something. If you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing with that energy, you're going to get depressed because you didn't do what you were supposed to be doing. So you cycle through anxiety and depression. Start doing and being and speaking who and what the fuck you need to be and see if your anxiety and depression don't start taking a back seat to your will and to the truth. Hey, O'Shea's on the good shit. He got from the ghetto. He's cruising the ghetto this morning. He got some good shit. So my go-to all the way from the start is always with everybody. Been from the start, the truth. So let's be honest with each other. I'm not here to try to change you. I'm here to express my truth and show you the options that you have that might be different than the options you've taken that will lead you to better things in your life. Now, whether you see what I see as better things in life may not be the same thing. So while you might see having a driver's license, Hezekiah, as a, a good thing, I don't see it as a good thing. Because you pose that they wouldn't have a driver's license unless you're supposed to have one. That's the fallacy of thinking. I wasn't born with a birth certificate. It didn't come until after I was born. Okay. In the scripture, it tells us that man became a living soul. So if anybody tries to profess themselves to be a man in front of me, I have to help correct even them. Because I don't see you as a man. Wizard, wizard. I feel you. Let me finish. I feel you as a spiritual being. And therefore, I have to express it as that. Genesis 2, 7, according to the scriptures that I use as my holy writ, which I believe you would confer and agree with that God created man of the dust of the ground. And when he breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, man became a living soul. I cannot possibly be subject to any one of those codes then because it never, ever refers to the living soul. Not once. If it could admit that one truth, we could work on it, but because it does not, I cannot use that other than as a reference to point out, the, again, the scriptures that I use as my holy writ that say John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. It also says, says in those scriptures that God is love. So if I'm supposed to follow the word, the word is supposed to be of love. No matter how loud I get and how violent others might think I am, I am truly doing it in love because I've been there, brother. I've been under the belief that you had to have a driver's license. I found out different. And I'm trying to express that. I don't need you to believe in it. That's not my purpose. So I'm not here to argue. I'm here to point out plain, simple truths that everybody can and should read. Did you know, brother, that they have in their code for inpatient hospital services is the definition of a spell of illness? Oh, yeah. See, he's thinking now. Yeah. Look that one up, brother. In their own federal code, they have a definition for spell of illness. And when you read that, you will find out that mother on the first day of inpatient hospital treatment was conditioned as a spell of illness. If she went in there under doing the good works of our father, which art in heaven, bringing a legacy heir into this world, and he was born on that first day or second day, it was still his first day. So now we have a spell of illness in duality, wherein they converted, not the discharge of man from his mother's waters, wherein he took the breath of life and became a living soul, but in fact, kept him in that stature as a man by making a record as a man continuing the prenatal record that was discovered as a man when she discovered she was pregnant. Now, now I want to bring in to completely juxtapose that because I like to play sort of good cop, bad cop. Let's get back to pure Darwinism. Only the strong survive. That's what our institutions teach us. I don't go there, but I hear rumblings that the institutionalized folks believe in Darwin and Galton and all the rest. So I promote that. If you're not strong enough to go out in the world and co-create without having a group of beings behind you doing it for you, then just die. And we'll all be better off as a herd of animals, right? Even if that's me, if I'm one of them, I die. We're all better off as a genetic pool, uh, informational species, because we will continue to carry on uh, the qualities that allow us to co-create without codependency. See, one of the biggest problems we have is we're not co-creating in faith with the supernatural, what's natural. We're co-creating with codependency on what's unnatural. Look at our corporations, look at what we're doing to the planet, look at what we're spraying in the skies, look at what we're dumping in the water supply, 
Look at all the products they're putting on grandma's feet that are causing cancer, right? Let's just get right down to it. We need a archetypal revival of the supernatural. And it is not natural for groups of men to rule over other men at their own detriment. Folks want to be part of that. They have the right to self-identify. It's called the United States Citizen 14th Amendment, the Public Safety Clause. You have a right to self-identify as a member of a body politic and be kept safe. All I'm asking is that when I don't identify as that on the paperwork, there's two classes of being under U.S. code. I was going to give this finger, but I won't do that because he'll say that I'm that I'm. Uh, well, let's do this for the demo. No, demo crazy. I, they like this you one. brought me back up. You've been being perfectly cool. So let's be Sir, I love you. I know you won't get that. And nobody gets that when I say that, because the way I present with the energy is that of a father who's not willing to waver on truth because I want better for all of us. I don't like what you do, but I care for you as a being because I am you. Right. That's the bottom line here. If I didn't live that way, I would lose. So you can say it's purely selfish. I've ascertained the universal program. I live by it because I want the best results. Maybe it's selfish, but it still keeps me doing right. Identifying as, as us being the same and oneself is not only true, it benefits me in the way that I approach my interactions. I can be harsh on you one second with truth that's combative and turn around and embrace you because we're all in the same boat of fucking slavery and genocide. I can't elevate myself above anyone and I will not be put beneath anyone. And I suggest that you adopt the same uh, um, you know, positioning, right? And then defer to folks who have exemplified that they have walked the path for longer and gathered more understanding and applied it. That's all I'm asking. That's common sense respect. I don't go into a blacksmith shop and tell them how to put fucking horseshoes on a horse. This is what we do and live here. So when folks come in here and start kind of, you know, getting at it, we get at it, right? And there's no hard feelings. This is about truth at the end of the day, because we need to be free is my perspective. Now let's hear from you, Mr. Hezekiah. Like they're forcing us to work and that's not the natural state of things. Okay. But what is the natural state of things? Well, you got to eat to do that. You have to work the fields. You have to work. You have to physically get up off your ass and do the work. Whatever you want to define that as having a job or working, it is the natural state to work. Otherwise, you're just going to lay in a ditch and starve to death and die. And that's it. You still got to gather water. You still got to raise the crops. You still got to take care of your family. You still have to work. Whether you're working at a job or not, it is the natural state of man to work. Absolutely. For your absolutely. What's not the natural state of order, right? Because you're just talking what you give is what you get. You got to produce to consume. There's different ways to put it, right? The bottom line is what's not the natural order is you just produce 60 fucking bananas by growing it and tending to it. And some group of fucking authoritarians comes along and says, Hezekiah, you're going to give us 40, 50, 60% of your bananas because we say so for everyone's safety. That is not natural. That's it. Well, maybe it is. That's a predator. And how do we deal with predators, right? So whether you think it's natural or not, I can substantiate either way. And it needs to be dealt with the same way. Because either it's unnatural and evil and has to be dealt with, or it's predatory and has to be dealt with. And just claiming it's for safety doesn't work. But now here's the key. Everyone self-identifies on the W-9 as a withholding agent, subjecting them to code and policy. I didn't, ignorance of the law is no excuse. If they stop signing as a withholding agent of the United States Government Corporation, they could then claim exemption. exemption. Because a natural man, under U.S. code, there's two kind of classes, protected and privileged. If you're a withholding agent, you become a privileged class, benefits and privileges, at the exchange of rights. If you, if you remain as a protected man on the land, they have to uphold the law and your rights and can't subject you to duties and obligations like taxation. That's straight out of U.S. code. That's all I'm saying, sir. I'm not telling us we're all a bunch of weed smoking commies sitting around ain't doing shit, think we're going to get shit. I'm saying that we got to produce to consume and what we create goes to us in the community and then back to the creator where all things come from. Not to scum who mismanage and misappropriate and do war and pedophilia and trafficking with them, right? Right. And again, this is... And I'm trying to, because what I found, again, earlier when we got into a dispute is that, and I kind of have to bite my tongue a little bit because there are a lot of things I'm trying at this point to, instead of nitpick the bits and pieces that I disagree with, to try and, and pick out the pieces I do agree with. And sure. there is a lot of stuff there that does make a lot of sense logically to me. It's just when you quantify it in those terms, it, in my mind, it's kind of like, you know, I look at, at you guys, you know, you're in your home, you're on the internet, you're in the stream, you're doing the thing, and nobody's stopping you. The stormtroopers aren't busting in the door, dragging you away. And they're not, no, not yet, either. sir. Not yet, the not same yet, thing. right? Not yet. No, not but we already, no, I'm just saying, and, and again, that's also a mischaracterization because there's many folks, you may not be aware, there's many folks that I've come to know doing this thing who have had their door kicked in and been dragged away and haven't even got their day in court yet. The, the, you, did you see Donnie? Let's take Donnie and Joey, all of them. They're all scum. He sat up there and said, we're going to take people's guns uh, uh, without due process. The guy, Mike Pence, was sitting there trying to even like work with him. He goes, he goes, he goes, and these people are all bozos. So don't think that I align with any of these. No, I know, I know, okay. But yeah, he's sitting there going, 
you know, Mr. President, we don't want to take anybody's rights in due process. And he just goes, well, how about we just take their rights in due process and go to court later? So they're like openly telling you from even a Republican platform, they want to overtake your rights for everybody's safety. That's a common theme on both sides. We should be worried. We should be worried because everyone's looking to take all the rights. We can't speak anymore certain things because folks are unsafe by saying it. We can't pack a gun to stop the thugs from robbing us in the inner city, but the agents have them, right? Uh, the, we're, we're losing our rights on every level to our private property. Everyone's paying tax on their home. That means their property ain't really private. Like we were arguing before about public and private, they've destroyed the private sector. There is no more private. Your home ain't even private because you pay tax on it and don't have the original documentation. The bank owns it. Guess who the bank uses to regulate it? Policymakers and enforcement. All right, right. And they're telling me that it's eighty-five dollars for a sticker. Right now, <laughs> if you wanna, if you wanna get with me and say that's way insane, too much amount of money for a stupid sticker, I will get right on board with you and we'll march down to city hall together. But let's go all to the say way. that you don't even need a license plate at all. That's where the disagreement comes in. But that's okay. the thing, right? I'm, I'm, I'm your huckleberry. Wizard. I'm your huckleberry. Yeah, I'm your huckleberry. Because you show me any law other than 26 USC 7701 subsection H, wherein it talks about the motor vehicle operator's lease. And under that motor vehicle operator's lease, the guy that's claiming to get a license and, and register this automobile has to give a handwritten statement of his intent. And it must clarify that he intends to use the motor vehicle at least 50% of its use for trade or business. Ah, uh, the there's the caveat. They the always do it to us. Business <laughs> means the performance of the functions of public office. Now, under that construct, that means you first must have an oath of office to then make that statement, to make, to make a qualified statement, to get a license. This means to get a license, you have to have an oath of office. This means if you proclaim that you have a license and you haven't taken that oath of office, you are committing treason by, by knowingly putting a false statement on the record. I am your huckleberry, buddy. Let's go. Now, this, now this is no, okay, don't be adversarial. He's coming no. correct now. He just no. wants to learn and, 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 and unify on certain principles and understanding. And that's great stuff because, again, the code is always their undoing. They don't follow their own codes. This is how unbound the power structure is. They wrote code down to bind themselves, not us. They don't even follow the code that's only meant to bind them, and they apply it to us. This is the height of hypocrisy and, and abdication of, of will and freedom and rights to a completely corrupt fascist system. That's all this is, doing barratry and fraud on every level. And just let me sort of paint the scenario first, and then let me see how you guys respond, okay? So sure. um, I steal your car, and you don't have plates on it because let's say that it isn't even because you decided you don't want plates. It's just license plates aren't even a thing anymore. So can I right? give you this They're already? already I, I just want to be clear about my latest position. I okay. have a plate on the car deemed a non-commercial. I want to get to, I, I, I've now, because I haven't used my, my car, I've been moving around. I actually forgot the exact verbiage. It is a non-commercial private carrier, I believe. Something to that effect. It is it is recorded, not registered, because register is a transfer of property. Regis, root word is king of the king. Register means to transfer property to the state. It is recorded with the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration for everybody's safety. The only problem is under the federal capacity, you're not required to have a license, insurance, registration, or any of that, because travel under federal jurisdiction is a right. So I have a recorded plate. So I think this is going to kind of destroy where you were going because it's numbered. They can look up what it's attached to, a trust. Uh, it says right there, unlicensed carrier, personal, private use, whatever, not personal, private use, right? Um, so I am well within my rights federally. Will the state municipal corporations maybe have a beef with it? Possibly, but it's outside their jurisdiction. If they interfere with me, they're doing an act of war on what we call the United States. So commercially. would you then... Because, okay, that works for you if I steal your car. But what if I steal his car? Okay, great, great question. So, Wizard, he stole your car now. This guy's stealing everyone's car. <laughs> Everyone right. around the car. Well, no, I'm trying he to stole your car. No, I get it. Argument, I get it. I'm just laughing The about argument it, is that there's no plates, right? And then I steal your car. <laughs> How do you report it stolen? You call the cops and say, yes, the red car? Like that, that, so now, to make the police leave us alone, you're going to have them pull over every single red car in the world because they're trying to find the one that's Well, let me ask you this one, right? Imagine how easy it would be to find the only red slave car that doesn't have a plate on it. You almost might want to carry a plate with you if you steal me or Wizard's car and put it on so you could blend in because you're going to be the only dummy going down the road without a plate on. It's going to be real easy to find that car, ain't it? Right, but I'm painting the scenario where... You guys say, like, we need this, we need that. And so the government says, you know what? You guys are right. No more license plates, no more IDs, no more of this, no more of that. So now it's 
anyone could just steal cars. They're just free. You just take them. No, the car has a register. The car has a recorded number, and then you can opt to get a plate that it's a descriptor that distinguishes it from other cars. But what's to stop anyone from just swapping that out? Like they could do that anyway. They do that all the, the time. Take someone's also, car. also the how do you get to the VIN if you don't stop the car? Exactly. So you would have the police. Okay. Stop so what stops so someone read your VINs? No, I just told you how. Okay. Someone stole his car. There's no plate on it. There's a red Hyundai going down the road, just been stolen with no plate on it. Why would you have to stop anyone? It's the only car on the road without a plate. You have to stop people so less. You're just making an argument for less. a plate. You're no, an I, no, for a plate. no, because there's so because many. Because that slaves. would be the only one without a plate. Well, no, because then what we would do is have personalized plates where it would say Robbie Cleveland. Oh, no. If you don't want one, then, you don't want one, then that's called dangerous then, freedom. Then you have to mandate it. Then whose, it's the same problem thing we have it now. whose problem is it then that you have some local. mandate it, and then it's the same thing we have now. No, a mandate is a request, an advisement. So it is mandated. They're requesting and advising that for your safety, you put a plate on, but it doesn't keep you safe. They respond after the car's stolen. They're already off to the chop shop. None of that in there is what you think it is. So they can just switch the plate with their own plate and ride off with the same kind of car. What's stopping them from doing that? You can't keep everyone safe all the time. If it, in a free society, there's danger. That's why you have to protect yourself that's, and your property. You can't guns. rely on government and forced interactions and contracts to keep everyone safe. Guns. And, and so guys have been taking that with... right too in many of the cities. Why you're going back to being purposely obtuse, or you've and never guys, been to the inner cities? Listen, seriously. There's guys, many inner cities like New York, where I come from, where no one can own a gun. You can't Chicago, own can have a gun. gun. The and only guys, people yeah. who have guns are the thugs and policy enforcement, which the means thugs, when thugs, right. so the cops go after the thugs. Right, the but in the meantime, loss, injury, and harm is done to me to keep everyone safe. Why are and you not plus, getting this? I have to and, call someone to come keep me safe because I've lost the ability to keep myself safe. From what? From what? And guys have been and guys guys name their own cars and have been doing so an entire century. And when you name a thing, it's because it's yours. And if it's yours, it's yours to protect, not theirs. So as soon as you hand something over in any venue that gives it a possibility that they are not responsible to protect you, you have already given it up. You can no longer protect yourself. Does this someone does this says do? someone says it ain't about the guns? You folks don't get it. Yeah, it's, it's about a twenty. Yourself. To 50 to 100 year march every single society every time into tyranny it starts off with everybody free it ends with everybody being subject to 12 million statutes is my last count somewhere around 12 million policies and codes to keep everyone safe many of which cause folks harm who haven't done any harm this is ludicrous this would only happen in a completely insane and illogical society that can't use objective logic we're going to keep us all safe by harming individuals who won't sign up and pay for the safety it's called a mob protection racket some of you folks should get out in the street and talk to criminals then you'll start to see how government works on every level we're going to force you into a protection contract if you don't pay it nobody's safe so we're going to break your legs or your windows that's not how that works it's called voluntarism it's called the republic the precept foundational purpose of this place is of the people, by the people, for the people. Cornell University describes and defines consent of the governed as each man and woman. It says, someone says it ain't about the guns. You folks don't get it. Yeah, it's it's a 20 percent. to 50 to 100 year march every single society, every time into tyranny. It starts off with everybody free. It ends with everybody being subject to 12 million statutes is my last count, somewhere around 12 million policies and codes to keep everyone safe many of which cause folks harm who haven't done any harm this is ludicrous this would only happen in a completely insane and illogical society that can't use objective logic we're going to keep us all safe by harming individuals who won't sign up and pay for the safety it's called a mob protection racket some of you folks should get out in the street and talk to criminals then you'll start to see how government works on every level we're going to force you into a protection contract if you don't pay it nobody's safe so we're going to break your legs or your windows that's not how that works. It's called voluntarism. It's called the Republic. The precept foundational purpose of this place is of the people, by the people, for the people. Cornell University describes and defines consent of the governed as each man and woman. If you force the individual man and woman into an interaction and claim it's for safety, it's 242, section 1983, federal code, deprivation of rights under color of law. Color of law is defined as statute, policy, and code. It's been ruled upon in the Supreme Court. Statute, policy, and code can only be advisory. It cannot be compulsory. If you try to force it on everybody, you're subject to federal lawsuit. It's that simple. You're also subject to being killed, altered, and abolished. That's the Constitution. Right. Right. 
so what's the argument? Here's the argument. I'll tell you right now. Everything that you just said is nothing that I would argue with, except what uh, until it gets to the level of your definition of the deprivation of your rights. You're well, it's not my definition. You your rights. You're right. It's not my definition. It's not mine. This is what you're doing. You're taking the policy and code and the rulings. I thought these are your gods. They're not mine, but they're yours. We have to be what consistent. Are you talking about? I'm saying I'm okay. Well, then if you, well, then do you follow that one God or do you follow the Supreme court and the federal code? I follow the law, which the Bible even says we should. Okay. But again, it's only following the law if it's foundationally sound. So it goes God's law and then constitutional law and then federal law to protect God's law. So again, the the federal, uh, the, the constitution and the federal Supreme court has ruled many times. My understanding, please check, fact check this and keep me honest. Uh, um, the right of the people to use the road is uninfringible and untaxable. Registrations a tax. They're violating the Supreme Court decisions. The definitions of all the words are there. They're violating that when they're codifying it and applying it incorrectly, and they're doing it purposely. Because I've spoken to them. I have them all on camera. You should check my channel out. I have dozens of counties and towns and states saying they don't give a fuck about federal law or the Constitution. They believe they're their own business. They're going to set policy and overthrow the law of the land for policy. Doesn't work for me. They're all subject to federal law, but they don't care because most folks can't bring a case to be heard in the Supreme Court. So they just run roughshod on everybody with policy. But when we go to court, they can never really get any of it to stick because foundationally, like I asked the guy in court in Colorado, what jurisdiction does this court preside over? He said it's dual jurisdiction, administrative and common law slash constitutional. Well, that makes sense because, again, we're back to two types of people. The people as defined and persons, protected class and privileged class. Most slaves are self-identified as a privileged class. I go in identified. Slavery is illegal in this country. I'm telling you, sir, that slavery uh, may be illegal. Okay, I'm telling you the definition, the etymology. I'm not interested in what the code makers have said our reality is. I'm interested in what our reality is and defining it with words that don't change. If someone could come in and tell you arbitrarily how much of your living you're going to give to them, you're their slave. Because they, they can say 40% today, 80 tomorrow, 100 the next day. France has, like, I believe, an 80% tax rate when all is said and done. Is well, it not a socialist? Well, I'm just saying that it does, we already are socialists. This is what I'm telling you. So, like, if I don't know, I'm getting a read on you that maybe somewhere you, you sit on what we would call the right wing if you had to identify, because I don't see the world in left and right wing, but um, we already are socialists. The Republicans are the biggest proponent of publicized use of funds, redistribution of wealth. They get all the slaves to pay in and then they distribute the funds how they see fit. Both sides do that. They just have different uh, reasons on and agreements on where it's going to go. But the military centralized keeps getting funded to do war. All the policy enforcement divisions taking everybody's rights on the streets keep getting funded. Uh, all the campaigns to do wars on drugs and everything else, which is people's free choice to imbibe in, that gets funded. The private prisons get funded. Right? Everything seems to get funded except for like our rights, freedoms, uh, enfranchisement, if you want to use that word in the sense of our financial freedom. Like, And I'm, I'll give you a perfect example. And I want you to think about this. You, you had a surprised look on your face when I gave you some information earlier. Think about this term that they pull everybody into these courts on. Defendant. Fend is the root word and you have a prefix and a suffix on it. Now, fend, the root word is a verb. Okay. Now, watch how it transitions when they put defend on it. It's still a verb but it's an obverse of what the verb originally was. In other words, now it's not being able to fend. Your ability to fend is taken away, defend. Now you put the suffix on there, which is a action uh, transitive, A-N-T, defend, ant. Now you've transitioned from a verb to a noun. And you ask any English major, any English scholar, if defendant is known as an abstract noun, and that an abstract noun is not in fact known as a total fiction. So if I am supposedly the defendant in that court case, you're saying I am fiction, and that is wrong. You have to be, you'd have to be because under commercial law, man can't intercourse with a commercial entity. Every paper charging instrument that comes forth says the state of versus Hezekiah. That's a commercial entity, the state of. That's not a man or woman who can take the stand. They violated their legal procedure. A yep. complaint has to be by a living man or woman who can take the stand. If it's not, the charging instrument is fraudulent. But in order for them to do their busyness, their business, they have to have two corporate entities on the paper. So they all cap your ass, and then they got you defending against a legal entity, the state of. Will the and state of take the said. bench, please, to be and questioned it about its firsthand knowledge of the events? Or just the complaint? Absolutely, sir. Well, real quick, real quick, let me finish up, because I'm the guy that's got 93 cases, and I'm the one that's proving it. 93 cases. And Nala said they won't touch me. 
Why is it they won't touch me? It's not because I've made any threats. It's because I've learned, I've educated myself, and I'm putting the information out to people that show what they're doing is wrong. So they can't bring anything against me anymore. That's the criticism that we have to take in ourselves to realize, hey, if I'm going to call Brian O'Shea a dumbass, I better recognize that I was there before and I was a dumbass too, brother. I've been a fool all my fucking life, Paul. Doesn't matter whether it's 50 years old when I finally got it. The point is, I ain't that which was professed before. And that's what I'm proving. Actions speak louder than words. Again, look at that record, brother. Hezekiah, I urge you all. It's not just criminal convictions. Like I said, I've gone up against child support. I'm the only one I know of that the DA put a protection order out against and renewed it five years in a row. Well, no, you're not. No, you're not. Because I'm the second one, you know, because they put a protection order out on me and named nobody on the other side. And I couldn't figure that out, what they were doing there, till we yeah. went back to the drawing board. So that makes sense. Their protective order doesn't need nobody on the other side because the state of is the organization that wants the protection uh, from a protected class of being. So I guess the feds better get on their duty and protect them from me and me from them because I don't want any privileges and benefits. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, and you're likely one of those ones that if you did have children, you'd be getting a uh, withdrawal of sanctions on licensing as well. See, when you when you start affecting the system in those kinds of ways, that's the only evidence you need. I don't need them and their public record to reflect an apology or nothing. I just need to show that they are leaving me the fuck alone. And that's what it shows. Granted, there's a there's a there's a bench warrant out there, the 94th one, but as I explained, that can't possibly count because even if you look that up, and I urge everybody to do so, where they put a failure to appear for jury duty. And then no, no, no long title, no charges, no case number, um, no bond set or no, no bond found, no finances. And yet they set a bond for $350 and issued a bench warrant to the sheriff to come get me. Now I I've been in communication with them, uh, County commissioner, board of governors or board, board of commissioners, um, the County sheriff, the County DA, they don't seem to want to affect it. So that is the effect. Otherwise, they can, they can come get me. <laughs> but that's the strike yeah, sand effect. Awesome. Like when the cop told me out front of the courthouse, he goes, I think that you have warrants. You want me to go check? And he winked at me. I said, nah, I don't think so. He knew I had warrants. He didn't want to fill out the fucking order because he knew, like I knew, number one, it's not valid on many levels, right? Spiritually first, the spirit of the law. And the letter of the law is not sound. It's not fucking bonded. There's nothing there, man. When you go look in the process, it's never what it's supposed to be. And spiritually, it's not either. So. These folks are tired of having to do the dirty work of some costume slug who sits in a chamber all day. The guys on the ground, right? The policy enforcement, a lot of them, they're fucking sick of it. They join this shit to uphold the law and chase bad guys. They didn't join this shit to fuck with Paul on Slave who stands for the same thing outside of uniform that they signed up to protect in uniform. So when you learn what you're doing, so when you learn what you're doing, it's because you beat the bar. You know how to beat the bar because you go above the bar. I'll never start any lower, any lower than our Father, which art in heaven, because that's where it trickles down from. God bless you, Paul. God bless you, brother. Thank you, sir. You as right. well. Um, as far as seeking a service to something beyond ourselves, therefore, we're serving ourselves as well. Folks will say, well, you know, uh, self-service is a negative thing. See, I like to flip the game. I like to, like, make connections and, and bring wholeness, right? So true service to what we call God or conscience is the best service to self because you're being your best self. See, if you serve the truth and you serve yourself, you are your best self. And therefore the world is better for it. Change the world by changing oneself at a time. That's it. It's the only response ability and accountability that individual being has, right? So take on that task, change yourself, change the world, hold yourself and everybody accountable to the same standard of dangerous freedom backed by uh, I guess at this point, consensual slavery, right? Folks, some folks want dangerous freedom, like they say in court, dual jurisdiction, constitutional, common law, and administrative. So for the folks who want to ignore ignorance of the law is no excuse, I guess you have a right to voluntarily comply with regulation. All right, no problem. <laughs> for the rest of us who want our rightful place in the kingdom of God, so to speak, uh, we're going to be entitled to use our own will, which is connected to the will, uh, which is supernatural, right? So uh, I expect to be given passage in the valley of the shadow of death because uh, for whom works with me, the same whom or what rather that created everything else under it, including Shatan. Shatan, Lucifer, whatever conceptualization you want to use, personification, anthropomorphization that you want to use, it all comes back to the same idea. Anything under the all is subject to the all. He who walks with the all does not need anything else subject to the all because it becomes redundant. 
right? I govern myself with truth. What would I need to be governed for? Other folks who are perpetrators of lies, variant inversion, simulation happen uh, for our own growth, for our own learning, for our own uh, formality, right? For us to be formed uh, and made in the image of the Most High, it's a trial by fire. You're going to be tested. You're going to be challenged. You're going to be deceived until you turn from your wicked ways and your evil. Evil is just live spelled backwards. Stop living backward and you will co-create and commune with a higher level of consciousness than the masses who are in the world and of it. That's it. I got to go. It's, it's too much. It's too much, folks. I know you love me. I love you, but uh, I must be going. So uh, farewell for now.